Welcome to Moorhead Presbyterian Church. I am Pastor Robert. And I am Dave Lanfer, an elder of the church. We have a special worship service today, very much different from our regular online worship service. Instead of a sermon from me, Dave will be reading a poem. The po poem is titled, I Can't Breathe. And it's by Reverend Kelvin Walker. Today is also Communion Sunday. So take a moment now to collect bread or a cracker and some juice, water, or wine to use for your communion elements. We are glad you found us and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Do you remember our story from last week? Last week we read the first part of a story called A Gust of Wind. To refresh your memory, we're going to show some pictures now of what some of you drew when you listened to that story. So if you forgot the story, these pictures might help. Weren't those some wonderful drawings? Thank you to everyone who sent in a drawing from the story last week. Well, if you're wondering how the story ends, we're going to find out now. So here we go, the last part of A Gust of Wind. And remember, this is from a book in the Bible called The Acts of the Apostles. And if you're doing a drawing again, get all your paper and your crayons and markers set and draw what you hear in this story. Suddenly, the disciples began to speak in different languages, Latin, Greek, Arabic, all the languages of the world. They rushed outside. We are filled with God's spirit, shouted Matthew. God is the ruler of all, Philip exclaimed. The street filled with Jewish people from many countries who were celebrating Pentecost in Jerusalem. Every person, no matter where they had come from, heard the disciples speaking about God's power in their own language. The people couldn't believe their ears. Some in the crowd sneered. They could not believe that the disciples could actually speak all the languages. But many other people were amazed. Peter yelled, Each of you, here's our words in your own language. God's Spirit has made this possible. Okay, for those of you doing your drawings, draw away and send in your pictures and we will show them next Sunday. Goodbye for now. It is my privilege to read a poem by the Reverend Kelvin Walker. I've known Kelvin for over 30 years and I saw him as a student at, in college. Um, I saw him as he took ministry in downtown inner city uh, Pittsburgh and has moved its way through to be a district superintendent of a predominantly white district in the uh, New York metro area. He is African American. So as you hear his words today, it's from his perspective as an African American man in the United States. I can't breathe. It's a simple phrase. It's just three words. Yet the power of them, said over and over again, should have been enough to alert those who were constraining him that the force they were using was beyond unnecessary. It was cruel and excessive, and they should have backed off to let him catch his breath. Instead, now he's dead, silent. But we wouldn't know what happened without the video speaking for him because, obviously, he can't speak for himself anymore. I can't 
spree. Bird watching while black, and then comes the attack, simply because he asked her to put her dog on a leash. And though she came at him, she calls the police on him, screaming that she's being threatened by him. While he calmly films the incident, it was for his own protection. But he shouldn't have to live that way. Nobody should. Videoing every moment that you make, all because without it, your life could be at stake. Well, truthfully, even with the video, you're not guaranteed you'll go free. But one thing is sure to me, something needs to change because I'm at the point where, personally, I'm tired of hearing the words, I can't breathe. She worked her shift and came home, 
simply sleeping in the bed that was her own, and numerous bullets later, she's gone. But life goes on as if hers didn't matter because we're told to wait for all the facts. I don't know much, but what I know is this. While we wait for the facts, I am now wrestling inside because wherever I go, I feel like my camera must be on, ready to video my surroundings so that from beginning to end, the evidence will not be questioned. Dramatic, you might say. However, I see no other way that I can make it today or my beautiful black daughters and sons or my grandbabies that are yet to come in this day and age. I shouldn't have to worry or dismay over whether or not they'll make it home safely or if, even with the video evidence, they'll be believed. But this is the reality in the nation in which we live. And I'm at the point where I almost daily pray, Dear Lord Jesus, please come quickly. You are the only one who can bring true justice. But until you return, move your church to reject this. Move your people to speak out against this violence without questioning or putting the victims on trial. Move your people to stop living in denial. We must face without hesitation that injustice is embedded in the core of our nation. And your church can't stay silent about racism and discrimination. May we rise up and say, we will tolerate it no more. May this make us sick to our very core. And I beg you, people of God, speak up now, for it's just too much and I no longer know how. I can explain yet again why we must begin to do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly before him. So church, help me breathe. Stand up and say, no more. Reject injustice to, at its very core. Brothers and sisters, help me breathe, weep, wail, and lament over lives senselessly taken by evil intent. People of God, help me breathe, root out injustice at its core. Let that which God abhors be abhorred by you and me until that day we all stand free and see the Imago Day in all humanity. Then and only then will we put a stop to the craziness that fuels racism and injustice. But until then, I'll pray for you. And you pray for me. Because right now, I can't breathe. Brothers and sisters who are the church of our Lord Jesus Christ, please join me in our confession of sin. The words will scroll across your screen and you will repeat the parts that appear in bold. Please join me now. We pray, O Holy Father, for an end to the racism and injustice that prevents the people of God from breathing free. I can't breathe. Each of us is trapped in a system bigger than our individual selves, but this evil system hurts some people more than others, preventing them from breathing free. I can't breathe. Our thoughts and actions and our inner heart conflict with you, O God, and we are so quickly taken over by evil intent. It is sin inside of us and inside of our society 
that prevents everyone from being able to breathe freely. I can't breathe. Help us, O merciful and loving God, to stand up and reject the sin of racial injustice. Help us all breathe freely. I can't breathe. In this moment of silence, forgiving Lord, hear our silent confession of sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, all our sins are forgiven, and all of God's people say in unison, I can breathe. Amen. If you have not already done so, please find some bread or a cracker, some juice, wine, or water and join us for communion. This table does not belong to me or to this church or to anyone else. It belongs to Jesus Christ, and you are welcome at the Lord's Supper. Experts say that crucifixion kills someone through suffocation. They die by asphyxiation. Our Lord Jesus Christ, after he was arrested, was crucified and died because he could not breathe. On the night of his arrest, Jesus took bread, and after giving thanks to God, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body broken for you. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink this cup, do so in remembrance of me. Please pray with me. Having been renewed through the sacrament of the Lord's Supper, we ask you, O oh Father, to help us breathe freely and to help all people, all of your people, O oh God, to also breathe freely. Amen. Go now and breathe freely all this week as we walk with God and work together for the reconciliation of all people. Amen. Mm -hmm.